Today we begin work on the restoration of this statue of St. Anne and the Blessed Virgin Mary. This statue is in fairly good shape. There's a piece here of the crown that's easily removable. So we're gonna create a, a new copy of that from this side and then remold it onto the back been fully whitewashed, as you see, from back in the 1960s. In addition to our usual first stages of getting the dust out and trying to see what we're working with, we're looking for cracks, any kind of minor structural breaks. The next stage for us is going to be to use this uh, non-toxic paint stripper. We've already started to put it on here. The idea is to remove as much of the whitewash as possible to see what colors were used originally underneath. We know that it's a Tommaso Carly. We don't know the date, but we're eager to make her look wonderful once again. The chemical remover revealed blended coats of paint, primer, and whitewash, exposing only poorly defined patches of gold, pink, and stencil work. Gentle hand sanding revealed blended coats of paint right to the raw plaster, so the goal now was to smooth down the rough layer of white, especially on the faces. Pieces of the broken crown were removed and replacements molded and sculpted from the other peaks, and then it was time to move indoors. Pauline starts by applying the primary color coats of paint. And as the process continues, note the edges of the gowns and sleeves remain bare to accommodate multiple layers of gold trim to come. First of several facial colors is applied appropriate to her Middle Eastern lineage. And as she progresses, the artist will carefully begin applying those deep and rich layers of gold. At this stage, I'm painting an opaque yellow as a base coat to the gold afterward. After a basic outline, the stencil work is all painted by hand. It's a meticulous process that takes time, all hand painted but justifying the final results. The gold will next be adorned by a second hand painted line of trim, creating a border all along St. Anne's garment. With a stylized painted pattern on her light blue gown, numerous shades of paint will now help transform white plaster into the Virgin Mary's hair. Facial features, rich drapery and shadows will add life to the statue, as if under the watchful eyes of Mary. Jewels and pearls are painted on St. Anne's crown. And the Virgin's crown is next to be adorned. And after final touches, the statue's inspected in daylight. And from its plain white, it's ready to return to St. Anne's Church, which has stood as a beacon in Centretown, Ottawa, since 1873.